a little something like this. Check this out. Hey everyone, it's Jason Bennett, Popcorn HQ. We're back with another Beyond the Synopsis. Get a little deep dive into anything new that's about to debut. Hey everyone, it's Jason Bennett from Popcorn HQ. We're back with another episode of Beyond the Synopsis. Our spotlight on individual issues, trade paperbacks, hardcovers, original graphic novels that are debuting, and get a little deeper look than what the synopsis tell you by speaking with the creators themselves and uh, what better way to learn more about the story guest today is the co-creator of standstill the question being asked is if you could stop time what wouldn't you do and coming to image comics an eight issue miniseries featuring a sociopath that can stop time which debuts August 21st from Image in partnership with Xylenol Studio Inc. Having scores of credits already attached to Image titles such as you know, Six Fingers, The Good Asian, Philadelphia, uh, The One Hand, The New Scarlet series with Skybound. I mean, just to name a few. Uh, but he's back with the publisher, not just a coloring credit for his book. He's actually taken on writing duties. He's joined by fellow co-creator, illustrator Andrew C. Robinson, who provides stunning work uh, in this first issue. It's, it's mind-blowing. And also joining them is Rob Tweedy on letters. So I want to give the floor over to colorist supreme, world-renowned Lee Luffridge. Lee, thanks for uh, connecting with us and, and talking with us about your new series. Thanks for having me. And we're done. I think we, I think we covered everything. <laughs> you know, I was I was saying like we were lately talking about before. So I read the book, the first issue. It's incredible, and and one of the things I want to make sure that we highlight is that this first issue has sixty double page spreads. Visually, you're just you're just blown away. I mean, you're from from page one visually, it looks it looks just phenomenal. But then when you have all these double page spreads, you it's it's like a kid in a candy store. What made uh, you guys decide to go that route, this oversized pack debut for uh, your miniseries? I feel like if I tell you the truth, it'll make it sound less cool. <laughs> oh, well. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> um, it is the plan, the master plan is that it's kind of a pain in the neck because I've got to format this book two times. Because the goal is to collect all eight into a hardcover, a landscape hardcover. Ah, okay. So that's that's like the a photo album kind of. Yeah, people go through, and what's nice about the double pages in a in a you know a regular format is they get they're a lot bigger. They're about twenty percent larger. So when we collect it, it'll be in this big hardcover, and it'll be you know th whatever twenty two inch double page spreads will wow. be happening there so but yeah that was kind of the thing and then double size just making the art bigger letting it breathe like maybe slowing the reader down enjoy okay. the art take your time you know I, I feel like especially we've done a lot of things with lettering where it, it's definitely gonna be one of those books you want to you want to take a visual pass and then you want to do a reading pass so because we've definitely we're trying some new things that uh intentionally to slow you the fuck down when you read it. Like, just take your time. You know, you've got, you got 15 minutes. Enjoy it. It's, uh... I, I, I understand what you're saying, too, with slowing down, because every time I went to the next page, and this is even on a digital copy, so once I turned to the next page, I was ready to continue on with the, with the, the narration or, or the dialogue, anything that's going on. Instantly, I'm, I'm, I kind of had to pause and I'm looking at all the art and, and just the, the detail and just in its enormity. Uh, just beautiful. Yeah. Andrew, I mean, he's, he's unreal. He just crushes it and people should take time with the panels. Cause there's, there's so much like secondary storytelling going on in every, every panel, everything's very 
overly thought out in, in this book. And a lot of it is visual. Intentional, strategic. Yeah, fully. You know, it's a lifetime of reading comics and making them. And we're like, you know, our whole thing was, well, let's make, you know, it's something that, you know, is a bit different than, you know, it, it's definitely not another churned out book. <laughs> Not the right. shit on other comics, but you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the monthly stuff. It's tough to keep it. I mean, we spent eight years on this thing, so it's, uh, we had the time. So it's definitely, uh, you know, not shitting on monthly books because I do a ton of monthly books. It's tough, you know, that schedule. It, oh sure. You know, it you definitely have, have to make pragmatic decisions and economical decisions, but something like this, we uh, we did. <laughs> at the detriment to uh, our relationship with image for a while. <laughs> well, you know, and, and that's uh, something to be said. And, and I know, especially with back when the pandemic was going on, projects were delayed or, or shelved for a little while. But the, it's 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 great. We're still seeing these things come to life, and you're and you're getting that opportunity here with with yeah. Stuff, the so. Pandemic definitely like killed this. I mean, it just paused this for like three years. Um, sure. But, also helped me to write this and other stuff. So, and and speaking of writing, as I like I mentioned in in the top, you know, you're no stranger to writing. You just recently debuted in uh, Mid State, which, right. if I remember, I thought I remember you saying that it was kind of dream inspired. Yeah, uh, is is that the same case here with Standstill? No, this came. I mean, listen, it's not like the most original concept. None of them are. I'm not reinventing the wheel. But everybody has that. Everyone talks about that as you get older. All this is midlife shit, right? So it's like, if you could stop time, what would you do? If you could go back in time, what would you do? Like, there is an obsession with that. Sure. And um, with this, it really was just a conversation I had with my friend, uh, an artist, Sean Crystal. And... Um, we were at San Diego at the pool and we were just like, if you could stop, if I could stop time, I'd take one of those drinks. You know, it was just stupid shit. Okay. <laughs> like, all this stuff we would do if we could stop time. And mm. then morality came into it. And it was like, well, you know, would you walk into a store and take the Rolex from behind the counter? Because now the, you know, the, the, the counter person is now responsible for that watch missing. Would you rob a bank if you could stop time? Why? If you could stop time, you don't need money. You right. know what I mean? If you if you're hungry, stop time, eat, resume time. If you it's want kind, to mention it's kind stop of reminiscent time. of like uh the, the the main theme in Hundred Bullets, where you know it, it's what would you do if you know you, you could kill someone and get away with it? Right. So then you know. yeah, then it really that conversation turned to well, what wouldn't you do? So I always thought that would be a cool concept, and then um uh, you know, I just, I played around with it and I had this idea of having uh, two characters and one would be the sociopathic and one would be, you know, the, the one that's more moralistic and, you know, level-headed. And uh, I wrote a scene and I showed it to Rick Remender, you know, Rick Remender, writer. Yes. Uh, and he was like, no, nah, you don't want two people. Like I had two like straight edge kids, like hardcore kids. I wanted to like bring that into it. And he's like, no, no. He's like, fuck that. It should be one guy. He should be a, just lean into the the worst possible person getting this ability because the the moralistic side's not interesting. And uh, so but having that, those personalities clash. Yeah. So that that set me off on that path of having a sociopath with this ability. And then you know the scientist who created this device obviously is he created it for good. He didn't create it for more efficient killing, you know, or, or, or thievery or something like that. Right. So that, you know, that really set me off on that. And it, it is, it's a better story. He was right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it, it's okay to admit, you know, and I'm sure you appreciate hearing that from you. Might make his day. Uh, this debut issue, you have uh, three covers coming out. Uh, the one by uh, your co-creator and, and illustrator uh, Robinson. Yep. But, um also, Matteo Scalera and Kerry Nord. Right. Now, given the, the number of creators, I mean, uh, I'm sure you probably lost track, the number of creators that you've worked with over the years, you know, can we expect a, kind of more of a rotation of 
uh, other people that you've worked with in this industry? Oh, yeah. Um, um, no variants? I'm, pull, I'm pulling every friend and favor card I have. <laughs> you know, so time's up. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, um, how I'm going to do it is the, all the issues will have two covers, a main and a variant. Okay. Moving forward. Uh, actually, issue two, because Andrew did a cover in landscape, we're going to have a gatefold. Oh. So we're going to have his main cover. Then we're uh, Dave Johnson did a variant, okay. and then we're going to have the gatefold variant. And then issue three is just two covers. That's Jason, Sean, Alexander, okay. and then Andrew, and then um, four Alex Regal and John Beatty, and then Andrew, and then moving forward, I think issue five uh, will probably. I'm going to bump it and do three covers, but it's usually like okay. pretty much two covers. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely dragging my friends for uh, <laughs> for their art, <laughs> which is great. I mean, it's I, I don't know how people do create their own when they don't have relationships. You know, I've I've been at this for thirty years, so I know everybody. And it, it, yeah, and, it's and the industry me. the industry is really about that. It's about you know working together, collaborating, supporting each other, propping each other up. I mean, it's that, it's that kind of community that's, uh, you know, not as prevalent in the world. Well, lo luckily I'm, I'm bartering with guys, you know, on everything, you know, I'm, I'm trading color work for cover work, you know? So when Andrew's giving our table space at a, at a show, we're doing a lot of, of bartering for these covers, but and they're all friends of ours. You know, we're going to the people that we have relationships with that are, you know, happy to see this finally coming out. It took so sure. damn long. Uh, you know, and and I like the idea of the big collection at the end of, of all eight issues. Are will there be any kind of plan to do like two trades of like four issue arcs? We're talking about it. So okay. I think I mean I I know you probably can't go much into it because that's I, kind of saying, you know, what's going on at the end of issue four. I think yeah, issue four definitely has a, a big hang. They were written to be arcs. I, honestly, I just think it's what what do people want more? Do people want those trades? Do they want the big okay. book? So I, I defer to Eric Stevenson and everyone at Image. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I I don't want to spoil a hardcover by putting out trades, um, but like if, you know, the trades could be really cool as well. But I, I don't know if if one one eats the other. So sure, and it's and it's not necessarily. It's really not about money i mean obviously to, to have this thing paid for would be great right but if people really want those trades those double page spread trades we should definitely give it to them so mm -hmm. if there's enough of a call for it i think we'll do it but as of right now it looks like we're going to wait and do and just make everybody wait for that one landscape hardcover so that might have a bigger yeah. impact um i'm not sure you know yeah, well, you know, let's see the success of uh, the first issue. You know, if it ends up having to go back for a second printing, that could be a good indicator for you. Yeah, yeah, and honestly, and I don't want to tax the retailers either. You know, like I, I, I almost like I'm looking forward to San Diego because I want to talk to a lot of retailers and see what they, you know, what works for them. Right, because they're the lifeblood of this. So definitely, uh, I, I definitely want to work in tandem with those individuals because they're the industry. You know, uh, on that end, so. Right, right. And yeah, and uh, like we said, this comes out August 21st. Wrap things up real quick. You mentioned about uh, comic book re retailers and, you know, being such a, playing such a pivotal role as, you know, the heart of this. Do you plan on any signing appearances in and around your area? Yeah. Or? The, the day the book comes out, I'm going to go to um, Third Eye Comics in Annapolis, oh. Maryland. So... I have family in New Jersey, so I'm going to drive down and do a signing. Me and uh, Nick Dragata are going to go down and uh, sign for the premiere of that. And uh, okay. I think Andrew is going to do a signing at Comic Bug. I don't know why I'm doing this, because it's up the street. <laughs> <laughs> just gesticulating like an idiot on a podcast. Uh, he's going to be in L.A. I did it again. I can't. I can't. I have to move. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, I think he's going to do it at, at Comic Bug. Okay. I, that's not confirmed, but if they hear this, we're gonna we're gonna I'll it. have to yeah, I'll have to look. I know I get some newsletters from a lot of the Southern California ones. Um uh, and they usually keep up to date about, you know, uh who's coming, whether it's Conkba, Paradise, yeah. 
I need to get with them uh, today and actually confirm that. But I, I'm going to try to do a signing in New York that okay. that same weekend, like the 23rd. But I haven't mm -hmm. lined anything up yet. But that's, and I think Andrew's going to try to do the same thing while we're on both coasts. Okay. You know, we'll do a Wednesday signing, a Saturday signing. Then when we get back, I think we were talking about maybe Collector's Paradise. Well, what's that. great with them is they have three locations there where you can. Yeah, uh, oftentimes they're like, hey, meet the creator at 10 o'clock at this store, one o'clock at this one, and four o'clock. Yeah. I told you know, them I'm down. Uh, we're down for all of it. You know, I think, yeah. I think we're going to do a signature series with them as well. So nice. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm just, you know, trying to work that and just do signings and really promote issue one like crazy because issue two is good as well. It did. Uh, we keep the, the, the foot on the pedal all the way through. Right. Right. Lee, I love it. It's a great looking book. It's just stunning. Pass that on to Andrew if you could. It's just, it's, it's beautiful to look at. And, and your colors obviously just, you know, just really bring them to life even, even more. So you guys seem to really work as a great collaboration. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, we, it's been fun. He's, he's the best. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I think this is this is really going to be huge, and and I wish you guys all the success with this. So go pick out standstill number one, August twenty first. Lee, thanks for taking the time to talk with us about your new project, man, and uh, you know all the success in the world. You know, best to you. Right on. Special thanks to Lee Lowridge for speaking with us at Pod Cold HQ. I do want to express my apologies to Lee. I found out during editing that it's pronounced Lowridge instead of Luffridge. And I feel like an idiot. Still, as, as an editor, I should have done a better job at figuring that out before uh, we started recording. Anyway, be sure to hit up your local comic shop today. Pick up the premiere issue of the eight issue miniseries Standstill. Be sure to follow Lee Lowridge at Lee Lowridge. All one word on Instagram. Plus, to pick up issues two in advance, you can pre-order them now. Stand still number two. You can use pre-order code JUL240563. That's cover A by Andrew C. Robinson. Stand still number two, cover B is JUL240563. Four, and that's done by Dave Johnson, and it is sick. You gotta see this thing. And there is a C cover as well, J U L two four zero five six five, which is also by Andrew C. Robinson. All of those issues go on sale September twenty fifth. Get your pre-orders in now. You're gonna want to eight issue maxi series. It's gonna start off with the bang today. You're gonna love every minute of it. Pick up your copy today.